But the question, sir, the question in this whole message is a very serious question. And I will show you. This is my, this is my, this is my point. What, why will God go and ask a man to let his people go? God is the suffering. God is the greatest. Why is he asking a mortal man? Why is he telling Moses, go and tell Pharaoh? This was because something happened in Genesis 47. Genesis 47. Please, can you bring that up for me? Genesis 47. Let's take from verse 1 to verse 6 so that you can be clear. Genesis 47. Bring that up for me. Genesis 47 from verse 1 to verse 6. Look at what the Bible says. He said, then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, my father and my brethren are and their flocks and their heads and all that they have have come are come out of the land of Canaan and behold they are in the land of Goshen. Next verse please. Verse 2. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. Underline the word. He presented them unto Pharaoh. Next verse. Verse 3. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, what is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, thy servant, underline the word, thy servant are shepherds, both we and also our fathers next verse please and they said moreover unto pharaoh for to sojourn in the land are we come for thy servant again underline the word thy servant have no pasture for their flocks for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. now therefore we pray thee let thy servant dwell in the land of goshen next verse please and Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. Look at the last verse now. Look at the last verse now. Look at what it says. He said, The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land, make thy father and thy brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. Underline the word rulers over my cattle. Take it off. If you read with me just now, one thing was sure. There is a law that no Israelite should bow to a mortal man. It is God's commandment. You shall not bow to any man. In fact, that was the problem between Haman and Mordecai in Esther. Haman said, in my culture, we don't bow to nobody. But yet, Joseph and Jacob carried five people and they went to submit themselves as servants under Pharaoh. They went by covenant, they submitted themselves to Pharaoh. They said, Thy servant. <laughs> by only that statement, they became prisoners of Pharaoh. And watch it. Pharaoh wanted to magnify them. He said, You shall be rulers over cattle. Imagine. You are not rulers over men. You shall be rulers. There are some title that was given to you because of slavery. It is true you shall be rulers, but you shall only be rulers over cattle. Cattle. Man. Man. That's the only one you can rule over. Words have the potency of creating a covenant, known or unknown. They became servants by verbal conversation. And so, when it was time for them to come out of Egypt, they had to go back. God had to send them back to who their father sold them to. That was the only reason. Because Egypt had no wall around it. So how come God would send a man to go and meet? Because the man, Pharaoh, became the wall that needed to be knocked on. The gate that needed to open. And watch what Pharaoh said. He said, I know not the Lord. And he was right. Because when their father came to sell them, the Lord was not with them. When they were signing the agreement, the Lord was not there. If he had come with Moses, if he had come with Jacob, or had come with Joseph, it was in the archive that Jacob and Joseph and five other men were the ones who made the agreement to sell, to sell all of Egypt, or to sell all of Israel, sorry. It was there in the record. But the man must have looked at the record. And he said, who did you say I should let you go for? And he says, the Lord, he says, I know not the Lord. I know Jacob. I know Joseph. 
myself. I know the other five men, but I know not the Lord. So when Pharaoh was saying, I know not the Lord, he, made, he had a point. I know not the Lord. There is, a, there is a signatory to this agreement, but the Lord's name is not there. This is a typology of your parents going to idols to seek for help. This is a typology of your siblings going to get charms to prosper, to enhance life. This is a typology. Am I talking to one person in church today? There are some covenants your parents entered and you are not aware. And by your verbal conversation in that covenant, you have become enslaved. You have become imprisoned. You have become imprisoned to that covenant. There are things your father said. There are things your mother said. There are things your brother said. There are things your sister said. When your mother knelt down by that river bank, I was pronouncing statement. This statement has been heard in content. It has been heard in content of your family. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why when you try to move, the statement brings retrogression to you. When you try to accelerate, the statement is putting, matching the brake pedal. When you are trying to move forward, there is a contention in the spirit. Sometimes you are dreaming some funny dreams. You don't know what they mean. Sometimes you see yourself around rivers. Your mother went there many years ago. God is trying to tell you that this is the source of your battle. Am I talking to somebody here? Sometimes you see some revelation and you are confused. What am I doing in this mud house? I was not born here. I don't know what happened. Your mother went there and collected something. And today they have gone after your destiny. I want to prophesy any shrine your mother went to, any altar your father went to, and be in search of succor. They covenanted the next generation to suffer the impediment. I am here to make a decree by the power of the God of my Father that altar will be destroyed. Amen. 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 Somebody say, Lord. Amen. Somebody say, Lord. Amen. Somebody say, Lord. Amen. That evil altar. That evil altar. Calling my destiny. Calling my destiny. Into frustration. Into frustration. That evil altar. That evil altar. Calling my health. Calling my health. Into manipulation. Into manipulation. myself around there one of our wonderful sisters in the choir was seeing a particular dream every time and she brought it to my notice and I said to her is there any way I can see your mother she worried me went home and brought her mother and we sat here then I was doing counseling here we sat here and I said to the mother when you were looking for this child where did you go to he said, I went to a couple of places. Places, rather. The next thing I asked her, even while you were pregnant, where did you still go to? She calculated all the rivers she went to. They were 19 in number. The lady said to me, I can't sleep, sir. The moment something I sleep just enter, I'm on the river. I can't sleep. The moment I sleep just enter, I'm 19 rivers. 19! And you expect her to marry. How? You expect her to give birth. How? Because a covenant was entered. A couple of years ago, I followed this man to his village to pray for somebody. Who, the, 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 somebody came from Kaduna, a member of the family. He said he was connected to them. And then they brought the person to church. And they said to me, people are dying. Lots of persons, over, whether, whether 10 or 18 persons, I can't remember the number. How many, how many were there that they, who followed me to, to Ile? Eh? 18 children died. Are you hearing them? 18. How many children? What's the mic? Talk. How many? 18. How many? 18, 18 children. children. 18 children died. 18. 18. And watch it. When the 18 children died, they were, in fact, the reason why they came home was that they were burying somebody. So they called me. 
and I went there. And I saw, with the way, I saw the house, people have prayed. People had prayed in that house. You will know that prayer had been done. Sir, when you are praying and you don't know the root of your problem, you will be wasting time. He said, Jesus said, lay the ass to the root, the root of the matter. And then I shut my eyes. I said, Lord, I don't want to be among the pastors that have come here to pray and nothing happened. Lord, just show me the root of the matter. And I walk up to the woman who was still sobering from the tears of the barrier. And I said to her, Madam, can I talk to you? The woman said, okay, pastor. And I said, Madam, do you remember when you went to the river and you knelt down and you walked so, so and so and you threw so, so and so into the, into the river and you made incantations and you followed what they said you you should say and you left and for that sake you no longer attend you don't go to any river in life the first thing the woman said was no she said no i said madam think well because what i saw was too clear and then later the woman said eh, yes she mentioned one river she went to and that was where she made the covenant sir 18 children perish because a mother went to the river sir when the Bible says my people are destroyed for, because of knowledge, it's because you don't know the root of your problem. That's why you are getting destroyed. The moment you know the root of your challenge, victory is, is sure. Am I talking to somebody here? 18 children, sir, not all of them died as toddlers. Some of them were matured. Some of them were big and fat. Some of them were brought from cities to come and bury. Why? 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 Because of one nature force. One thing. And what was that thing? A covenant with the river. A covenant with where? With the river. A covenant with the river. So ladies and gentlemen, you must understand this fact. That there are things your parents did that are fighting you now. When Satan has nothing new to use against you, he will use your past. He will dig up something as an evidence. He will hold on to something as, am I talking to somebody here? When there is nothing new to do against you or to stand upon, you will be looking at the archive. The Bible says, in the days of ignorance, God overlook. Satan does not overlook. Satan document. Mm. While you are ignorantly selling your soul, Satan is writing it down. While your parents are ignorantly selling their, their destinies or the destiny of your, their born children, Satan is writing it down. So whenever he wants to rise up against you, he brings back the archive. That's why he's called the accuser. Of the brethren, it will dig up those things, those altars you raised, those things you dropped in Joshua. It will dig them up again, and it will present them before God, showing God the reason why you should never be blessed. As I'm talking to you now, what did they do when they fight you? You are struggling not because you are not hard working, because they have done something. Somebody did something. Stand up, make a professor for your head. The ones they did knowingly and unknowingly that is contending with your destiny by the blood of Jesus, it shall be nullified. Amen. I said, by the blood of Jesus, it shall be nullified. By the blood of Jesus, it shall be nullified. By the blood of Jesus, it shall be nullified. By the blood of Jesus, it shall be nullified. If this service comes to an end, so shall that plague in your life come to 